So how long have you listened to The Archers for? Um, I've probably listened to The Archers on and off and very irregularly, um, as long as I can remember. Um, my mum was a very regular listener, uh, so it was always on every day. Um, so it's kind of been a part of my life ever since. So you've said to me before you're not a regular listener, so you don't listen necessarily every day, every week. But when you do listen to The Archers, how do you access it? Uh, normally by, by digital radio, um, sometimes in the car, depending on the time of day. I think there's a day on the weekend where they have an omnibus. Um, so, yeah, car radio or digital radio, but not not through an app or not through the internet as such. OK. Um, so what is it that appeals to you about The Archers? Um, I think it's a couple of things. One is is definitely the nostalgia and the familiarity of it, which I quite enjoy. Um, secondly, uh, as a medium, I don't often listen to radio plays and I find it quite interesting almost picturing how they're producing it and how they're making the play to make it sound so realistic when I know that they're obviously just all in a studio with some sort of Foley artist doing sound effects. Um and yeah, some of the, I mean, sometimes, especially since moving to a rural area, I suppose I'm more interested. Some of the, some of the storylines they talk about are more familiar. Um, so I think it's those really. And I, I, I quite like the longevity of it, the fact that this has been going on for decades and that, you know, my parents and my grandparents would have listened to it. I find that quite an interesting idea. And finally, what storylines have you found particularly engaging when you um, have listened? <laughs> I, yeah, it's difficult because I'm not sure I listen frequently enough to be able to follow the storylines. I mean, I do remember the big one about domestic abuse a couple of years ago. Uh, there was a guy who fell off a roof trying to fix an aerial, which I remember we all listened to over Christmas at one point. Um, so I do, th- I do, I like, I suppose I like the storylines where they're trying to bring in um, current issues and, and reach a wider audience in. Uh, in a, in a, through a medium that they might not otherwise be aware of that issue. Thank you. Okay, so how long have you been listening to The Archers? I would say it's probably in excess of three years, but I go through stages where I listen to it avidly. Like every Sunday, I will catch up with the omnibus. Um, but then there are times when, like, I, I had a long commute to my last job and I just like to listen to things that maybe aren't music. And so mm. The Archers was really good for that. So when you do listen to it, how do you listen to it? So do you listen to it live on the mm-hmm. radio, podcast, website? If if it works time-wise, then it'll be live on the radio. Um, but if I miss it for whatever reason, I'll probably listen to it on iPlayer, so catch up. Um, and then if I have missed a lot of days then i'll listen to it on the um omnibus on sunday Mm. um so what is it that interests Mm. you about the archers what do you like about it do do you know what i think it's because it all started with this long commute and i felt like i didn't just want to listen to music i like to listen to stories and things like that and the archers was really easy you could dip in and dip out um and then there was a major storyline that was really like anti- it was anti um, archers because it was very dramatic. It was the um, coercive control uh, storyline with um, Helen and Rob. So a wife who, over a long period of time, just gets completely beaten down. She ends up being a complete shadow of her former self, and it all culminated with her stabbing him and then going to prison. Um, which is completely like not archers. Usually it's about a bird watch or some, um, like they always do things every Christmas. Um, what's it called? You know, um, like carol, Christmas carols <laughs> and like um, plays and stuff. And they're all, yeah. And that's like the biggest drama if someone is, I don't know, seen a bird that no one else has seen or something like that. Um yeah, so that felt a little bit more dramatic and that got me quite hooked. Um, and then from then on, I've kind of carried on. It's easy listening mm. and it's current. Not current as in makes me feel like I know more about the world, but um, like they will, so they'll refer to Brexit in there and they'll refer to the vote. Um, and so you're feeling like you are 
almost living a parallel, not a parallel life, but kind of like that. But it's a version of reality that's very, very similar to ours. Yeah, but Ooh. that is easy. You know, you're, you're not having the same kind of crazy dramas that you'd get in EastEnders or Coronation Street. There's no, apart from the whole Helen thing, everything's quite laid back and easy. You don't feel like exhausted after listening to it. Yeah. Oh, I see what you mean with that. So you've already talked about um, Rob and Helen storyline. <laughs> yeah. So was that a particular storyline that had, that hooked you in that you found particularly interesting or? Yeah. Um, not because I've had any experience of it or anything like that, but it was just, um, it was the most dramatic storyline that they've had in the last, I don't know, decade, 15, 20 years, I think, because it, it made the news. It made the news mm. across all um, media stations because it was quite not not graphic but it, it was quite it was very real and um you ended up just feeling like you wanted someone to physically kill this person um <laughs> so the person that I bought my house off was called Rob and was a farmer I don't like him because of that storyline <laughs> like, it's completely inappropriate um but I don't like him and that's how I imagine Rob in the arches to look like not him um so, yeah, I think that that kind of hooked me, um, that storyline. The other storylines are fine. Like, they're just easy, like I said. So there's storylines at the moment about um, uh, one of the farmers um, about 10, 15 years ago wanted some quick money. So when someone said, I'll give you 30 grand if I can just use the that field over there just to bury some waste in he said yes and it's toxic waste and it ends up like filtered into the water system and it's a real big issue oh so there's that one um what are the other storylines um oh there's a pregnancy storyline so with um european girl who came over to work and she oh god so she ends up um uh, volunteering as a surrogate for uh -huh. a gay couple and they are having so they are now um on their third try of implantation so their third transfer I think it's called so that's a really interesting storyline because she has broken up with her boyfriend who was in the UK so only the two couple the couple Adam and Ian and um her old boyfriend know the situation and then obviously in nine months time if she's pregnant it's all going to come out and then I don't know whether there's been talk of any money but I imagine that that's going to come out okay so so it sounds quite a lot like real life yeah but maybe less dramatic I say I say less dramatic than our EastEnders and stuff but I don't watch that <laughs> um Definitely less dramatic than Hollyoaks. <laughs> I used to want to watch Hollyoaks and that was crazy. Hollyoaks used to be my favourite. Yeah. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, um, how long have you been listening to The Archers? Uh, just over 37 years. Wow, that's a long time. So, it is a long time. So um, how do you listen to The Archers now? Do you listen to it uh, daily? Do you listen to the Omnibus? We usually listen to the Omnibus and often, if I'm coming home from a parent's evening, we'll catch it then. Sometimes we catch it lunchtime during holidays when we're out and about, but we usually listen every Sunday morning. So do you listen in the car? Do you listen at home? Mainly at home, but lunchtimes and evenings, sometimes we catch in the car. So how do you listen to it? Do you listen to it on like... It's, it's, the, it's the live broadcast on Radio 4. Oh, OK. Um, I've never felt a, le a need to go to iPlayer or to catch it. <laughs> if we miss it, we've missed it. Oh, interesting. OK. Um, so what is it that appeals to you about the Archers? Why do you enjoy listening? Um, a mixture of things. Yeah. Um, partly habit. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just something we do on a Sunday morning, have on almost in the background automatically. Um, several reasons why I listen that probably I shouldn't. Um, clearly, they have a, an index card going back to the original episode in 1950, whenever it was. And we like to try and second guess when when something comes up that they've... They've gone to the index card to pull out a fact 
a long <laughs> time ago. Yeah. And sometimes they refer back to things that clearly aren't quite right. Okay. Uh, we like to try and spot what the uh, to de- this week's farming fact <laughs> they follow is. Yeah. Um, there's also... They try and make it current by picking up something that's in the local news. Mm. It's always interesting to spot what's coming up there. Um, We get absolutely hysterical about the length of time they'll spend on some absolutely trivial thing, like um, Brian being surprised that a tangine was that shape. Right. When they'd moved... Um, when quite clearly from the conversation with Jen- Jennifer, they actually had two tagines, which they must have had in the kitchen, and they've moved to this small house, and suddenly he's surprised that a tagine is that shape. He thought a tagine was a food and not a cooking device. Oh, and, Brian! And how clever his wife is. And I'm thinking, but you've had two of them in the old house. In the old house, he had two tagines. Two tagines. Two tagines. And now you're telling me you don't actually know what a tagine is. Oh. So you get hysterical things like that. <laughs> and the best bit I like is the um, the media studies aspect yep. of the sound effects yes. they put in. Um, that's not a diesel engine in the background. Or isn't the pub busy tonight? And you're thinking, that's not what a busy pub sounds like in the background. Okay. So I quite actually like picking holes in the sound effects archive they use and how inappropriate it is. Okay. Or the occasional characters that <laughs> pit, that, that they, they, they refer to who never existed or the characters that are always on it but had never spoken. Um, okay. So, so, you, I, so you're, you're, it could be a mastermind subject? Sounds. Probably not, but I, I quite... I, I actually enjoy listening to it from a from a media studies viewpoint of how they're presenting it and what what they've done wrong, particularly with sound effects and plot problems. And mm. so we we don't take it seriously. We actually spend time making fun of it. Oh, okay. So it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a joint activity. Okay, so it's something you enjoy doing with someone else. With my you? wife, With yeah. your wife, you listen yes. with her. In fact, I started listening yeah. when I first met her 37 years ago oh. because she'd always listened as a, from a small child. Yeah. So she's always listened to it. And so when I met her, that's when I started listening to it because she always listened to it on a Sunday. Oh, okay. Um, so... Yeah. So, final question. Um, are there any storylines that you found particularly engaging recently? Oh, I always find um, the Grundy's various financial transactions <laughs> quite interesting to follow. And, uh, their, all their, their underhand dealings. All their underhand dealings and their turkeys and their geese and their illegal cider shed, set, shed and, um, and so that on. sort of thing is always, always quite fun. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, so how long have you been listening to The Archers? So I've been listening to The Archers since in the 1980s. Um, I used to listen on a Sunday morning to the omnibus version when I first started work. And it was a Sunday morning, lie in, listen to the radio. I got fed up of listening to Radio 1, um, just flicked over the channels, discovered The Archers, and that was it. So... You said that you used to listen to it on a Sunday morning on the radio. Do you still listen to it live on the radio? Or? Right, no, I don't listen to it live on the radio anymore. Um, up until relatively recently, I used to listen to the Omnibus version probably later in the day on iPlayer, mm-hmm. later on a Sunday. But now I actually listen on tablet, even through BBC Sounds, the new app. Yes, So yes. I listen on my tablet or on my phone now at any stage of the week. So do you always listen to the Omnibus? It's always the Omnibus version, mm. though, yeah. So what is it that attracts you to listening to The Archers? So it's um, gentle storylines, although they are often very deep storylines mm-hmm. and tackle some really difficult subjects. 
but they're gentle storylines. You don't, your heart rate doesn't go up while you're listening to it, but it um, still keeps your attention and you're still wanting to find out what happens next, just like you would in any TV soap opera. Hmm. So are there any particular storylines you found interesting or engaging? Or So storyline that we had when there was emotional abuse of Helen Archer. Um, that was about two years ago, three years ago now. That was a really powerful storyline that had, I think, had practically the whole country, everybody that was listening to it, hooked. Um, so we've more recently had a storyline where um, Kate's son, who, one of the twins, has been sent to prison for drug dealing. That's been a very heavy storyline, been very mm. interesting because he was a middle class lad, got in with the wrong lot, etc. And it was a yeah, very powerful storyline. So that's really interesting. So you said about... Um with the Helen Archer and Rob Titchener yeah. storyline. Yeah, story yeah, the whole country who of listeners was up yeah. in arms. Yeah. So did you um did you interact with other people talking about it or No, I didn't, but I probably would do now because again my use of um social media, phone, etc. has has moved on. So probably if they were to run that storyline and again now I will probably interact with more people about it. And but, but we were interacting within school because we have like this little we know who who listens and so we were we were discussing it in oh. in school with colleagues. Oh, That's the storyline. And it was it was it was obvious to listeners or oh, it became increasingly obvious to listeners what was going on, but of course Helen didn't realise, and which was a very interesting take on it. And then you all had a nice cup of solidarity, exactly, with Helen. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> okay, so tell me, how long have you been listening to the Archers? For about ten years. About ten years. Mm -hmm. um, and how do you listen to it? Uh, either on the radio as it is played at mm -hmm. 7 o'clock in the evening, or if I missed it at 7 o'clock, I podcast it in the evening, or occasionally catch up on a Sunday morning on the Omnibus edition. And so when you catch up on a Sunday, the Omnibus, you listen to it live on the radio? Yeah. Okay. Um, and so why do you listen to The Archers? What do you, what do you like about it? Uh, the range of characters, the range of stories. Um, I live in a small village, and you can relate a lot of The Archers' stories and the characters to the people that are where I live and <laughs> yeah. uh, it's a small rural village and um, you can quite often make connections between the people on the archers <laughs> and the situations on the archers to people that you live with and sometimes yeah you can see definite comparisons. There are um, relevant storylines uh, to do with um, all uh, different types of, um, you know, different types of people yeah. uh, in terms of um, families that are living with um, elderly relatives, younger people trying to get on the housing ladder, um, health issues, divorce issues. So it's very Lots of relevant issues. It's very yeah. much true to real life. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And also the storylines to do with farming and agriculture um, that's sort of my bag, so I find that quite interesting. Mm. So are there any particular storylines that have engaged you over the last 10 years that you so particularly like? So my favourite storyline was the relationship between Tom and Kirsty, who were due to get married, huge amount of preparation for the wedding, huge amount of money spent, Kirsty very excited about the whole thing, and then she was stood up on her <gasps> wedding day. I know. Why did she stand her up? Because he got cold feet. Classic cold feet. And sh poor Kirsty. And I sat and listened to that episode with my then about 11 year old and 14 year old daughter. And they, they, they got hooked on the storyline because I had it on. I had to listen to it live that week. Of course. Of course, because it was building up to the wedding. And he let her get as far as the altar. <gasps> and then he stood her up. And you knew it was going to come. It was like a slow motion car crash and I'm not kidding you the three of us were around that radio thinking this is just too much to listen to <laughs> <Kirsty."> 
Wow. And yeah, that was one of those moments where every it was just horrible to listen to because you knew what was going to happen. And yeah. Well, you want anyway, to cover poor your old Kirsty now um, is now dating um, a much older man. She's very happy and he adores her. Oh, good. For so Kirstie. Tom's lost and he's now dating Natasha, who is pretty vile. Ugh, so he Natasha. Got it, he, he, it came back in spades, so it's all fine. Ha. Huh. Yeah. Stuff you, Tom. Stuff you, Tom. <laughs> She's better off without you. Yes, I think Kirsty's yeah, definitely better. Who stands her up? Who, who, who you know? Who stands But actually, Kirsty now has become quite embittered, unfortunately. Oh, really? Yeah, poor old Kirsty. Yeah, she's on a bit of a mission, save the world, save everything, and she is quite... She's a little bit old before her time now. Mm. Bless her. Well, we'll see how that turns out, won't we? I think we, we will. I think we will. I think we will. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you.